Adam and Jamie are finally ready to turn one of their classic experiments upside down. My goal here is to go underwater, <laughs> turn turtle, and get back to the surface without either breaking a window or resorting to breathable air. But can he stay calm enough, long enough, to make his escape when the car's belly up? Mike, go ahead and start your engine. We're about to find out. In three, two, one, go! The plan works to perfection as the car pitches nose first and then settles roofside down. Adam's initial fears are unfounded. Both he and Don are so far uninjured. Oh, all right, the car's filling up. Whoa, it's definitely totally upside down. All our safety procedures are working great. It's slowly filling up. I'm definitely not going to try for the driver's side door. I'm going to try for the passenger door. Inside the car, the pressure, in every sense, is rapidly rising. But back on the surface, Jamie's almost buoyant. <laughs> well, I can hear Adam making all sorts of noise inside there. I don't know what he's saying, but uh, he appears to still be awake and intact. It's true. Right now, Adam's unhurt, unfazed, and surprisingly chatty. Waiting for the car to fill up so that I can open this door and escape. Right now... I can actually see out the back window. I can see daylight, which is really pretty tantalizing, honestly. Oh. It's crucial that Adam stays calm, especially as a massive curveball is coming his way. The upside-down car suddenly twists right side up. Oh. Oh. The car's turned over again. All right. And it might turn over again once we get down because of... Because of the lines we've got on it, I'm going to try and open it with my... Oh, my might! Ah! No. Okay. Stay calm. Wow, the windshield is totally spraying water out at me. Woo! Dude, I did not expect this. With each passing second, the car fills with water. But Adam does at least manage to stay with the last pocket of air. Let me see if I can open this door. Ah, uh, no. I have no access to any doors in this. I have to wait until this car settles down. It is taking a long time to sink. To Adam, it's taking forever. But in fact, it's only 60 seconds since the car hit the water. But things are about to accelerate. Okay. There's a lot to get caught up in in this car, and my visibility is about to disappear. Here we go. I can hear the last bit of air hissing out the back of the car, so these guys are uh, pretty close to being totally in the water, and the car is going to be going down. And sure enough, just seconds later, that uh, that uh, it's going down. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy is right, as the car suddenly drops like a stone. It flips yet again, so it's back upside down. Remember that Adam's not wearing a dive mask, so his vision is even more blurred than this. What's more, there's no air pockets left. After a worrying period of silence, Adam finally breaks free. He figures out which way is up and swims to safety. But did he really survive? Or did he resort to a blast of emergency air? Oh. You all right? Oh. I'm OK. It's pretty definitive <coughs> that I died right there. That means you had to partake of the onboard air supply. I absolutely had to partake of the onboard air supply. Uh. And uh, I breathed in a little water on the way. The car turning and being really unpredictable at its turning, which I think was actually quite accurate to a real-world scenario. Oh, the car's turned over again. All right. 
my air pocket was changing constantly. And when it finally started to lurch and go under at the end, it went really, really, really fast. I had about 10, 15 seconds of warning, <sighs> trying to take a really deep breath. And then I tried opening the door. And at that point, I was completely out of air. I, it was just too stressful. You're in this super confined space. You cannot see anything. You can't, you lose all your bearings. I mean, I couldn't find the handles on the doors without a mask. His only choice was to take the air offered by Diver Don. And Don had his own problems. My safety diver was actually pinned in his seatbelt and had to use a knife to actually cut himself free. The whole time I was underwater breathing air, I couldn't tell you what part of the car I was in or what direction was up or down. The disorientation was complete. They both lived to tell the tale, but Adam only got out with the help of canned air. So the myth that it's next to impossible to escape when the car turns turtle is confirmed. The essence of Adam's approach to survival was exactly the same as the first time around. Stay as calm as you can for as long as you can. Staying put till the car fills with water is still the best tactic. But the fans were dead right. Getting out is a whole lot harder when you're upside down. The difference between this test and the first time we did this with an upright car is literally night and day. So the take-home message is? I don't know about you, but I am keeping a commercial window breaker in my glove compartment from now on. Unless you live in the desert. Exactly. And remember that technically, Adam would have drowned in that car. So if he's recommending a window breaker, all I can say is the man knows his business. Mm -hmm.